Western Ukraine is a part of the country where it was possible to save the best crafts and traditional material culture from the Soviet influence. The Soviet Union, in accordance with the agreement with the Third Reich, occupied the territories of Western Ukraine, which were the part of Poland. During the World War II and the next years, Ukrainians from these regions resisted Soviet repressions, both by military means, guerrilla war, and cultural, preserving their traditions being in the underground. And yet more than a half a century as a part of the USSR affected the material culture of Western Ukraine. Some of the crafts fell into decay, as there was simply no one to continue them. The old masters died, but the young people didn't place them. When Ukraine gained independence, the young generation started to discover forgotten crafts of their ancestors. One of such modern masters, unexpectedly for himself, was occupied with production of musical instruments with centuries-long history and couldn't stop. I make the hurdy-gurdy, a stringed instrument. It is like a violin, but with a mechanical keyboard. And instead of a bow, there is a wheel. The lyre has a guitar-shaped body, if to explain in a simple way. In fact, the wheel fiddle isn't an easy instrument, both for master and for the artist. Masters learn this craft all their life. Gordy Staruk is not yet 30 years old and he prefers to measure his professional age in produced wool fiddles. At present, I'm working with my 35 instrument. Geography of my works has already gone beyond the borders of Ukraine. My clients are from Poland, Germany and Canada. Recently, one of the instruments was sent to South Korea. There is a demand and people are interested. What is the world and Ukrainian background of the instrument? What are the unique features in works made by Gordy Staru? How does the hurdy-gurdy sound in modern processing? See next in the program. Historians of music art believe that instrument of similar design appeared in ancient Greece, but one of the earliest forms of the hurdy-gurdy was the organistrum known at least since the 11th century. Due to its size, the organ instrument was played by two people, one of whom turned the crank, while the other pulled the keys upward. The instrument was used in churches. As a result, it was replaced by a more suitable and solid organ. The organ instrument was simplified and was used by ordinary people. Sometime in 13th to 14th centuries, it was actively used in Western Europe. Minstrels played it. The early version of hurdy-gurdy became the European instrument for stray musicians. In Germany, it was even called begging. The famous English artist William Hogarth depicted a lyre on the engraving Fair in Southwark as an attribute of a low social environment. Frenchmen changed the attitude to the instrument in the 18th century. Masters improved the mechanism, changed the sound to two octaves and passed to talented musicians. Thus, the wheel lyre became, in fact, the court instrument of Western Europe. Moreover, one of classical composers, Joseph Haydn, began to write concerts for it. However, the situation in Eastern Ukraine was another. There was no fashion for this instrument among people who had money. The lyre was famous among certain class of elders, wandering musicians. Very interesting group of people in the history of Ukraine. Mostly they were blind, but at the same time they created their own workshops, had their special language. Such a blind musician became one of the main characters of Ukrainian film The Leader, directed by Oles Sanin. All Kobzer players, including elders with lyres and other folk musicians, refused to sing propaganda songs after the forming of the USSR and from the 30th of the 20th century were banned by the Soviet authorities. Tradition and production of hurdy-gurdy was almost stopped. In 2000, Gordy wasn't going to become a master of these instruments. He comes from the dynasty of sculptors. His grandfather, famous Emmanuel Misko, who created a lot of sculptural portraits, including the first in Ukraine monument to poet and writer Ivan Franko. 
somewhere in the early 2000s. When I was a student, a lot of ethno festivals were held in Lviv. I heard the lyre first at that time. I wanted to try it on my own, and I asked about the price. The instrument cost a thousand and five hundred dollars, and I thought I could do it easily myself. Gordy had experience working with wood due to sculptor education, but mastering production of lyres wasn't possible to anyone yet. For several years, the future master has collected something similar. The first liar I made for two and a half years. While I was doing it, the rumors about me as a liar master were spread. While I was working at the first instrument, it was already ordered. I was very happy, thought about money. But when the customer came, he refused to buy it. <laughs> Gordy didn't want to leave this new profession. On the contrary, he began mastering various techniques collecting a full-fledged master shop. Today he works in the same placement where his father and grandfather sculptured. Especially for UATV, Gordy Staruk demonstrates how Ukrainian wheel lyre is created. Any instrument begins with the drawing. Gordy didn't want to deal with redesigned lyre models. He tried to return to the origin. Young master contacted with the Museum of Music and Theater in Stockholm where one of the oldest wheel liars was stored. The Swedes sent photo of the sketch to Lviv. Body of traditional Ukrainian instrument was often made from unbroken piece of wood. Poplars, for example. It is very important to split the tree properly. It cannot be cut, it is necessary to chop only. Then we outline the contour of the workpiece and already cut it around. Then take some wood from inside and leave it. That is, the whole mass of the tree is not immediately taken from the future music instrument. Every day we take out the wood, together with extra moisture. The technique allowed Ukrainian masters to get a dried wooden product without cracks in just one month. Otherwise, it would be necessary to wait at least half a year or even more until material has dried up. As a result, we have future instrument only 3 mm thick and translucent. This is such an authentic method. Bandura, Kobza were produced in such way. At the time when I studied this subject, not a single lyre was saved with a hollowed out body. People say this is due to the fact that lyre players were buried with their instruments. Anyway, Gordy revived this craft tradition in the 21st century. There is another way to make it more modern. Masters should take the factory veneer of special thickness which then needs to be bent according to the shape contour of the side walls of lyre. This is a red-hot tube filled with sand and is brewed. The sand keeps the temperature well. You need to cool it down a bit with water, and the wood should also be cool. Then we take the workpiece and bend it to the form of a future liar. At the guitar production, this process is automated. Special machines bend future instruments and control the temperature themselves. But Gordy produces everything with his own hands, and none the worse. Then we take wonderful patron, as the violin masters say. It can be made of plywood, and there is already a form to it. It is necessary to stick on these curved details and press. Then you need to make the bottom and the top decks. The last is especially important for correct sound production. Gordy doesn't have time to dry such large pieces of wood for a long time. So he is looking for material. People often throw out pianos and you know that their wood is excellent. Basically, these are old tools, already dried. The wood that masters used at that time dried for 25 years. I take the old details for my lyres and they sound just super. The only thing is that you need to break the piano. I was lucky to find already broken. In order to make the mechanism of lyre, mathematical calculations and precision are required when they cut in details. 
There are about 200 of them in the instrument. Gordy produced them with his own hands, except perhaps the screws. Strings of traditional lyres were made from organic components. I had an experience of making the strings out of animals' intestines. They were used for most old instruments. They are called vein strings. But it turned out that the smell was awful. In addition, vein strings are quieter. If he was asked to do the reconstructed lyre, as in Middle Ages, he would use the vein strings. However, Gordy is a master of exactly modern instruments, with his own modifications but doesn't forget about traditions. It should be said, the general principle of work hasn't changed since the Middle Ages. The spinning wheel extracts constant sound from two strings, and on the third, the musician plays the melody using the keys. Tuning of lyre is much more complicated than guitars, for which it is enough to download the tuner program and tweak the strings to computer. The lyre is more like a piano. In Ukraine, we have a number of musicians who really like how this instrument sounds, and they experiment in different ways. Someone wants it to sound like a wheel lyre, and other something cosmic. That is, they use different musical gadgets. My task is to make a lyre practical. Gordy Staruk spends at least three months and sometimes a whole year depending on the model. Ukrainian wheel lyre is unique. Herdy Gordy isn't only acoustic instrument for street musicians. Gordy plays in the modern Ukrainian band, which uses one of his lyres. Especially for UATV, Master plays the composition on the instrument connected to amplifier. In 2017, Gordy played on his lyre at the International Friendship Fair in Seoul as a part of Ukrainian delegation. His wife represented their traditional Ukrainian designs made of paper. One family, two masters. Ukrainian material culture definitely out of danger. I still produce my works, made by myself, using only Ukrainian materials. People prefer instruments done by hands.